Hey everyone, welcome back to Dan Does Korea. Happy belated New Year's. Sehi bok mani baraseo. I have to apologize. I know it's been a long time since my last video, and I am very sorry about that. Um, I would like to say it's because I was busy during the holidays. That is not true. I was very lazy. We started online classes in the beginning of December, and for some reason, online classes are so exhausting. Without the kids in the classroom keeping me on my toes and keeping me energized and sitting in front of a computer screen for most of the day, I just find online classes to be much more tiring than being in class. I'm very happy we are back in the classroom this week, so hopefully I can spend more time, more energy on uh, some more DDK videos. So this video on COVID is one that I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. I've just been putting it off and putting it off mostly because I just consider it to be a huge topic with lots of details. COVID's been here in Korea for a year now. How do you summarize a year in a short YouTube video? I'm gonna try. Uh, before we get started into this COVID stuff, I want everyone to know I am not a data analyst. I'm not even much of a news junkie. I did do a little bit of research. I looked at a few graphs. I read a couple news articles. This video is gonna be mostly kind of my experience, what I've seen during this whole crazy pandemic thing. Uh, so keep in mind, if there's any wrong information, if there's anything I missed, I'm not an expert. I'm just a Canadian guy living in Korea during a global pandemic. So let's get started. I guess we'll start at the very beginning. December 31st, 2019, China recorded their first case of Corona. Pop quiz, or rather just one trivia question. What was the first country outside of China to record a COVID case? Cue the Jeopardy music now. The answer is not Korea. The answer is Thailand. Thailand recorded their first case January 13th, 2020. Three days after that, uh, Japan had their first case. And then three days after that, on January 20th, Korea got their first case. Today is January 20th, so it's been exactly one year to the day that Korea has been living with the virus. We got it from a 35-year-old Chinese woman who flew from Wuhan to Incheon. For the first few weeks, I didn't notice a big difference in much of anything. I did notice more people wearing masks and there was a lot of talk, gossip going around about this virus. But for the first almost month, our cases were uh, only grew to about 30. And then patient 31 happened. Patient 31 was a Korean woman, 61 years old, who traveled from Seoul down to Daegu, uh, kind of near the south of the country to attend a mega church service. The church is known as the Shincheonji, I think. It's a wee bit controversial. It's a cult. And she attended a service with hundreds, if not up to a thousand other people. And a week or two after that, our cases skyrocketed. At that point, Korea was in a bit of trouble. And that's when things kind of got serious. At first, it was just kind of clusters, mostly centered around Daegu. Daegu was like ground zero. But there's a few other clusters kind of around, around the country. A month after patient 31, 60% of the cases were attributed to this church. The leader of the church got on TV and did a public apology with all kinds of people cursing at him. Uh, but that's how it all got started in Korea. I think it's pretty well known that Korea is one of the success stories, or at least was in the beginning of controlling this virus. If you look at some graphs, uh, you see a lot of other countries, their, their numbers just go up and up and up and up steadily. Um, not all of them, uh, but gen the general trend is the numbers just go up steadily. Uh, Korea's graph doesn't exactly look like that. And so let's talk about why that is. What did Korea do differently or what did Korea do well to kind of flatten the curve? I believe it was a good joint effort between the government and the people. They seemed to come together and realize the dangers of this virus. The first thing I noticed right away, uh, right from the very beginning, was that everyone started wearing masks. 
I know this is controversial for some people. Uh, here, it was an easy transition. Wearing masks is not a new thing. People have been doing it for quite a while. I remember my first year in Korea, the apartment that I lived in was along a river. So I used to go walking along the river. I would see people wearing masks, like surgical masks, doctor's masks, and mostly elderly people. I was wondering to myself, why are there so many elderly doctors walking to work in this country? I soon found out that it was not because they're all doctors. People are just protecting themselves against the air pollution. We have very poor air quality here, mostly in the springtime. So it's that. And plus, uh, I think it's the Asian culture thing where if you're sick, you don't want to spread it to others. So people wear masks when they're sick. Not everybody, but some people do. So that transition from no mask to mask was uh, pretty easy for everybody here. Uh, it took a bit of getting used to for me. I still don't like it but I do it. I wear the mask every time I'm out. So because everyone was wearing masks, there was soon a mask shortage. I remember seeing lineups at pharmacies. I remember seeing trucks parked on the side of the road selling masks out of the back of the truck. There's apps on your phone that would show the location of pharmacies and how many masks they had in stock. In one instance, I saw an argument between a customer and a cashier. The customer, I think, wanted to buy all the masks in the store and the cashier wasn't allowed to do that. So while everyone back home was fighting over and hoarding toilet paper, um, I still don't understand why that is. Uh, if someone can explain that to me, please do. People over here were uh, doing the same thing. Well, not quite the same thing, but people here were panic buying masks. The government uh, noticed this, noticed this a little bit of panic buying and hoarding, and they implemented a program so for a three, three weeks, four weeks, maybe up to a month, there was this program where you could only buy masks on certain days and it went by birth years. If you were born in a year ending in one or six, you could buy a mask on Monday. If your birth year ended in two or seven, you could buy a mask on Tuesday and so on. And then Saturday was reserved for people who missed their chance during the week. To keep track of this, they uh, recorded your uh, government ID number so that you couldn't like go to multiple pharmacies and buy more masks. Uh, so that worked and within a month uh, the mask supply was was restocked and ever since then there's been no problem finding a mask at any pharmacy, convenience store, grocery store. So that seemed to work pretty well. Other than masks, I don't remember any other kind of panic buying or any panic in general. Nothing else was out of stock. Uh, grocery stores were it was business as usual. So that's kind of how the citizens kind of did their part was with the masks. I did not notice a lot of social distancing. I did not notice people consciously trying to stay far apart from each other. I'm sure some people did. I just didn't notice it as being a thing. Some businesses would put like tape down on, on the on the floor to you know try and keep people apart. I just didn't see people following that. The another thing I noticed was hand sanitizer was put out absolutely everywhere. You can find hand sanitizer in elevators, on public transportation, uh, every business will have one. Another thing that happened not quite right away but soon after was you had to uh, sign in everywhere you went or get at least get your temperature checked. As for the government's part, the government learned their lesson a few years earlier. If you remember 2015, uh, the MERS virus, Korea was hit pretty hard by that. It's nothing compared to COVID. The numbers aren't even close. But at the time, it was kind of a big deal in Korea. What's it called? MERS is the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, I think. So outside of the Middle East, Korea had the most deaths out of any other country in the world, up to, I think it was 38 deaths. After the MERS outbreak, the government changed the law. They actually changed the law to allow the government to trace people or track people electronically who had contracted a virus. Now, I know some of you are going to scream big brother on this, but it didn't seem to bother anyone here, or at least no one I know. There, there just seems to be a lot of cooperation in, in this respect between the government and the people. Both sides know, know that there's a problem and they, they want to solve it together. So the government traced people who have been confirmed as being COVID positive and they would do this using cell phone data. So they would follow the location of your cell phone and they would use credit card transactions where so they know what businesses you you shopped at. A lot of people use their credit card on public transportation to swipe in and out so they would know what buses or subways you were in. And the CCTV, so they would follow you and look look for you on CCTV. 
which is absolutely everywhere. And with this information, they did two things. The first one was contact tracing. So they would follow your path and they would look for people who you have been in contact with, try and get a hold of them and get them tested. The other thing that they would do is relay all that information to the public via cell phones. We would get notifications on our phone that would tell us uh, if someone in our area uh, tested positive, no names, but you get a patient number, you get an age, you get a gender, you get, I think it would say if they're a uh, Korean or a foreigner, and then you would get a link to a website with a timeline and everything, uh, all the places they've been in the last two or three, four days, something like that. It got to the point where I had to turn my emergency notifications off because it was just a little bit too overwhelming. Another thing that they did with tracing was um, pretty much everywhere you go, or every business you go into, if you go to a restaurant, you gotta sign in either with a personal QR code on your phone or you sign your, uh, your name and your phone number and what city you're in. Another thing the government was very aggressive on was testing. Again, they learned this lesson from MERS, the importance of testing. So right from the very beginning, from patient number one, I read in a news article, the government got to work on developing a test. And with even before patient 31, there were thousands of tests in different hospitals around the country. So they were ready to go with testing. And for a while, Korea was number one in the world for testing. I've never been tested, but I've heard that testing was free or at least mostly free. I also read an article that said, if even if you were here illegally, you could go get tested for free. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if it was a sting operation to find the illegals and get them out of the country. I'm not sure. They also set up drive-through testing facilities throughout, uh, I think it was just Seoul, but it might have been around the country. I'm not sure. Uh, you just drive your, your car up, someone in a hazmat suit comes and does your test, and within a day you get a text message saying yes or no. Closures is kind of interesting. I'll, I'll start by saying the economy is extremely important here. Um, Koreans love money. They love shopping. They love going out and eating. The government was very hesitant to to announce any like official lockdown. So uh, up until just recently, I don't think there was an official lockdown for most places um, throughout most of the summer, the spring and the summer, I don't think. That being said, public schools closed down right from the very beginning, only for a couple months. They were only out for a couple months. A private academies like mine, most, depending on their size, they would close, it was kind of voluntary, um, at the beginning at least. My academy is quite small, so in total, and this only happened at the very beginning, we were closed for uh, a week, we opened for a week, and then closed for the second week. So I had two weeks off in this whole pandemic, and they weren't even consecutive. <laughs> in a bigger academy like my buddy Ryan, uh, he tells me he was off for six or seven weeks. Uh, so I guess it depended on the size of the academy and class size. I did not see a lot of restaurants closing. My street that I live on is lined with restaurants. And even at the very beginning of the outbreak, you, you would see people on the street, everyone wearing a mask. And then you walk down the street, you look in the restaurants and most of them are full or close to full and all masks are off. So I didn't really understand that in the beginning. I still don't understand that, but for the most part, there has not been a lot of business closures. I have noticed places recently, I think places have to close before 9 p.m. And that's been since December. But in general, I haven't noticed a whole lot of closures. My personal experience, other than having to wear a mask all the time when I'm out, not being able to work out uh, at the gym, just generally eating out less at restaurants, 
and not being able to go to my bar to play darts and practice my dart game and online classes briefly. I haven't noticed a huge number of changes in my life. I haven't been able to experience COVID in North America or Europe or anywhere else in the world. But from what I've seen on the news and from talking to people back home, I have to say I am happy that I am here in Korea during this whole mess, mainly because my life has not been turned upside down. I do pretty much everything I did before. I just got to wear the mask. I know I didn't talk about everything I wanted to talk about. Like I said, this video, I've been putting it off just because it seems so daunting. So many things I wanted to talk about. I hope it turns out to be coherent. I hope you understand everything. I do have a bunch of videos planned for, for the next few months. I'm just waiting for the weather to warm up. It's been almost like a Canadian winter here. Last night, the temperature got down to minus 16 and we have had uh, three, maybe four kind of major snowfalls. Uh, made Korean major snowfalls, not Canadian major snowfalls. So I've, I've been enjoying the winter time. Uh, the only thing I don't like is I can't go ride the bike. If there's anything specific you want to know either about Corona in Korea, anything you want to comment on, please do it down below. And I will say, and you say, oh, stay safe, uh, wear that mask, and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers.